Hello world, I'm Laura. And I'm Tom. Welcome back to Some Kind of Gaming. This week I'm really excited because I get to talk to you about some of my favourite games. So cosy isn't necessarily a genre in itself, but more of a feeling that you get when you're playing a game. So to us a cosy game is something that's relaxing, or maybe it has a wholesome storyline, or maybe it just generally makes you feel like you're getting a big hug when you're playing it. Yeah, I feel like way too many games these days are focused on some form of competitiveness, or they're at least designed to induce stress somehow. For example, we're just as big a fans of horror as much as the next guy, but when we come home from work at 10 o'clock at night after a long hard day, it's not necessarily something we feel like playing. These games, however, are perfect. And the Switch is perfect too for these kinds of games since you can so easily play them curled up in bed. So get your PJs on and get a cup of tea and in no particular order, let's talk about 10 of the best cozy games on the Nintendo Switch. First up, we've got Two Point Hospital, which is a resource management hospital simulator, somewhat similar to the Tycoon series if you've ever played one of those. It's your job in this game to create a reputable hospital in order to move on to the next level and progress through the game. There are heaps of challenges for you to face in these levels too. Mainly you'll get an influx of patients with a particular disease that you must cure by a certain time. The more patients you cure, the better reviews you get and the more overall stars you get for your hospital. This leads for a super addictive gameplay loop that you could sink hours into. Now what sets Two Point apart from its contemporaries is actually its humour. Now you'd think a game about curing the sick could get a little morbid and a bit dark at times, but it's actually the complete opposite. The developers have got around it brilliantly by making all the diseases light-hearted and funny. One of my personal favourites is lightheadedness, where all the patients' heads are light bulbs. So you've got to buy a certain machine that unscrews the light bulb and screws the human head back on. This makes unlocking the next level super exciting, as I personally couldn't wait to see what the developers had come up with next. There's also some light-hearted DLC for you to get as well, like the recently released Sonic skins, so your doctors can look like hedgehogs if you'd prefer. Now we know that running a hospital in real life is not relaxing or fun in any way, but in Two Point Hospital it's just that. Do you like farming simulators? Do you like hack and slash combat? Do you like dungeon crawling? Do you like RPGs? Well if you answered yes to any of these questions then ooh, boy do we have a game for you. I've been really looking forward to discussing Room Factory 4 Special. I feel like I don't see a lot of people talking about it and that it's a slightly underrated game, but it's definitely one of my favourite RPGs. In standard Rune Factory fashion, the player character wakes up in a town with amnesia. Seeing as though you have no idea what you're getting yourself into, the local prince decides that you're the best candidate to take over in his princely duties, as his interests lie elsewhere. And apparently a princess's duties include tending a garden, running a shop, and even going out and fighting monsters. Speaking of fighting monsters, there's so much more to the combat than mere hacking and slashing. Rather than grinding for levels, there's a real emphasis here on the crafting elements. Yeah, the items that you harvest from monsters or on your farm can be used to create new weapons or upgrade your existing ones. This helps you out in battle way more than just leveling up. You can even grow your own weapons or dungeons on your farm from scratch. You can also tame any enemy you come across in the wild to join your party and help you on your quests. If you're really lucky or have enough patience, you can even tame a boss monster which will make for some powerful allies. Speaking of allies, Selfia Town is full of interesting individuals with their own quirks and unique dialogue. You can also request that they join your party, but they'll most likely say no unless you're already friends with them. This is what introduces the dating elements which are common in farming sims. Who knows? Your greatest ally might even be your husband. Just like you're my greatest <laughs> ally. So get your hands on Rune Factory 4 Special. It's a great farming sim with so much more to offer. Spiritfarer is a unique heartwarming indie adventure game set on the high seas. As the title implies, you've just taken over the role of Spiritfarer and it's your job to tie up the loose ends of the wandering souls that have come to dwell on your ship, preparing them to be ferried to the Everdor or the next realm. As you collect each spirit, you have to complete tasks for them, first of all by building them a house on your ship and then by trying to tie up any loose ends that they may have, like putting an end to an old quarrel or reuniting them with a loved one. This is where the story does get quite emotional. As you get to know these characters so well, it's heartbreaking watching them come to terms with death and it's equally as heartbreaking having to say goodbye. 
I'm not gonna lie, I did shed a tear a couple times. There are several activities that take place between each island where you meet these spirits. This helps change up the gameplay and keep things interesting and fresh. They range from platforming based challenges to crafting usable resources which help you expand and develop your ship, allowing you to take better care of your spirits. It takes a pretty special story to deal with death in such an uplifting and heartwarming way. I actually didn't even finish this game because I just didn't want it to end. <laughs> so I definitely recommend giving Spirit Fury a go, and if you do, maybe try to actually complete the game unlike me. Pokemon Sword and Shield. We've been fans of Pokemon since the very beginning, back in the days of Red and Blue. For many, including myself, it's the gateway drug of sorts to gaming. What really gets you into it in the first place, you know? I spent many nights after school and now after work trying to catch them all. Me too, and I remember it's actually what we bonded over when we first met. Yeah, that was the uh, precursor to this one. Yeah. The mainline series Pokemon games are essentially all the same. Yes, there's a different story in Sword and Shield, it takes place in a different region, and the Pokemon themselves are vastly different, but if you've played a mainline series entry before, you know what you're in for in this. There was actually a bit of controversy because of that. Yeah, I felt like people wanted Game Freak to be innovative, and they just haven't been in like 25 years now. Yeah, I think that there was a bit of an expectation for Pokemon to be more like Breath of the Wilds or something, but it's not Breath of the Wilds, it's Pokemon. Yeah, I know people were a bit disappointed about the graphics, like there was this certain tree <laughs> that many people had a little bit of a problem with, but again, it's not Breath of the Wilds, it doesn't run on the PlayStation 5, like, it's Pokemon, and Pokemon is simple fun. And it is disappointing that you can't have all of the Pokemon on there at the same time. But there were so many new ones, so there's always an opportunity to pick a new favourite. Yeah, try something new. Now I think we can cut Game Freak some slack. Sword and Shield made huge leaps forward in the Pokemon franchise. The wild area was a wide open space that you could independently roam and you could even engage in online battles with players from all over the world. It was a nice break from the linear gameplay that you usually see in Pokemon. Although it was kind of small, it was enough to keep me happy, at least until Pokemon Arceus releases next year. I think Pokemon is the perfect cosy game, but I might be a little bit biased as it's possibly my favourite game franchise of all time. The turn-based combat is the chillest of combats, and let's be honest, Pokemon was never really that hard in the beginning. We love Pokemon so much here at Some Kind of Gaming, and Sword and Shield really stays true to the memories each of us have of playing this franchise as kids. We implore you to pick up Sword and Shield if for some reason you haven't already. We could do an entire video on how Dragon Quest Builders 2 is the most underrated game on the Switch. Actually, I think that we will, so I'll try not to say too much about it here, but there is a free demo on the eShop and you should at least give that a go. I love Dragon Quest Builders with every fibre of my being. I spent the entire second lockdown here in Melbourne playing it, clocking in at just under 300 hours and I loved every second. Now again, we do have another video planned for this subject, so we're just going to leave you with Minecraft, good. Zelda, good. Dragon Quest Builders 2, good. A Short Hike is a short but beautiful game and we think that you'll love every second of it. This is an indie adventure title where you set out to explore the wilderness of a national park. The goal here is to get to the tallest peak in order to get reception to make an important phone call. The main quest is to get golden feathers, which act as stamina points of sorts, allowing you to climb further and further up the mountain. Along the way you'll find hidden chests and plenty of characters to interact with, most of which will have some kind of side quest for you to complete in order to gain the aforementioned golden feather. We absolutely adore the whimsical pixel art style here, and we really hope you do too. There's something so magical about just gliding around enjoying the scenery. It is completable in just a few hours, or even less if you choose to buy your feathers instead of finding or earning them, but it's also pretty cheap, so if you're just looking for a wholesome way to spend your afternoon, you won't be disappointed with a short hike. Turner Boy Commits Tax Evasion is the cutest little RPG you ever did see. The title here does a really good job of explaining the premise, actually, as your little turnip works hard to pay off his hefty debt to Mayor Onion. Along the way you'll meet a delicious cast of vegetables who seem to be in a little bit of bother, so helping them out is your duty as the hero. 
Throughout your journey, you'll uncover hints to a far larger story. It was actually way deeper than I anticipated. Some of the themes got quite heavy. Yeah, they really did. Now look, this doesn't mean the Turner Boy isn't a light-hearted adventure. In fact, it definitely is. It's hilarious. We found ourselves laughing out loud on multiple occasions. Turner Boy is a little sh**. One of the main goals in the game is to rip up every document you can find, whether that be a love letter or a construction permit. It's the general feel of this game that makes it a masterpiece. The combat is simple and it's rather short, but we can't imagine a list of cozy games without Turnip Boy on it. It definitely deserves its place among the AAA titles on this list. Look, if you're a fan of RPGs, having a relaxing time, or just vegetables, we really think you'll love Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. I am so stoked to be able to talk to you about one of my favourite games of all time today, Breath of the Wilds. Now you may be wondering how this game snuck its way onto a list of cozies, and to be honest I thought the exact same thing, so don't worry. Now I've put almost 200 hours into this game, completing all the shrines, and I didn't exactly think of it as relaxing, especially when I was going toe to toe with the liner. However, Laura obviously thought differently. And I think that's a testament to just how good Breath of the Wild is, so I'll let her explain. I wanted this game to be on this list because while Tommy does make some good points, and I didn't necessarily find Thunderblight Ganon relaxing by any means, at the end of the day this is an open world game so I do believe that the experience is whatever you want it to be. Oftentimes I found myself seeking out the quiet moments in Hyrule, like hunting game and foraging rush rooms, and finding and taming the best horse was one of my favourite ways to wind down during my playthrough. I could easily spend hours lost in the wilderness of Hyrule, exploring the beauty of this game with no real purpose other than to just experience it. So there you have it, Breath of the Wild truly is whatever you make of it. How good must an action-adventure puzzle game with real-time combat be to make it onto a list like this? <laughs> Breath of the Wilds isn't just one of the best games on the Switch, it's one of the best games of all time. And if for some God knows why reason you haven't played it yet, please pick it up. Stardew Valley is an adorable indie farming sim with your classic premise. You're sick of city life and your grandfather has left you the legacy of his farm which becomes your next chapter in life. It begins just as you would expect by clearing out your land and planting your new crops, but as time progresses new things are unlocked for you. Farming really takes precedence here, but Stardew Valley is full of exploration and adventure. Whether that be battling your way through the mines, or taking the bus to some outside place beyond the valley. Most of these extra features are unlocked through the community centre, which is a dilapidated old building in the centre of town. You're tasked with restoring it by collecting many different items. I know we said farming sim before, but it's also a lifestyle sim as well. The townsfolk all have their own distinct personalities, and the interactions don't just end with buying seeds. You can climb the ranks of the Adventurer's Guild, curate your own museum collection, or even help the mayor find his pants. <laughs> and if you're lucky enough, or nice enough, or shower them with enough gifts, you might even fall in love and start your own family. It really sounds like Stardew Valley has it all. And we're not exaggerating, it literally has it all. This game screams cute. Everything from its 16-bit art style to its adorable soundtrack. It's really hard to find a fault with Stardew Valley. As the only dedicated farming sim on this list, it takes everything that its predecessors did so well and improves on them, turning Stardew into something ever so special. There is so much freedom to be creative in this game, and the customization seems almost endless. Some of the farms that I've seen seem like pieces of art and it is amazing seeing people's individual creativity shine through on their farms. What makes all this even more impressive is the fact that Stardew was developed by but a single man. Everything you see here and here was created by him and him alone. Stardew Valley was and continues to be a huge indie hit. If for some reason you're still on the fence or haven't picked it up yet, consider this your sign to do so. Now the last game we have to share with you today is a quintessential cozy game and it's none other than Animal Crossing New Horizons. Since this game has sold over 33 million copies, I assume you already know about it, especially since one third of Switch owners already own it. Now just in case you're part of that other two thirds or have somehow been living under a rock for the last year and a bit, 
We're here to convince you that it is a damn good time. The premise here is that you've just moved to a deserted island and quickly become responsible for turning this from a barren landscape into a thriving community. This game just oozes wholesomeness. There are no enemies, no combat, nothing else to do except have a big old relaxing time. Now I must admit, I wasn't a big fan of Animal Crossing when it was released. I was a little bit hesitant. I know, I know, I'm sorry, don't shoot me. I felt like it was a little bit directionless, like there was nothing to do and that there was no real purpose to this game. So if you've had any of these thoughts, I completely understand. I was there at one stage, but let me tell you just how misguided you are. I became obsessed. It's one of the only games that we had to buy two individual copies of. After Tom saw me play this game from sunrise to sunset for over a week straight, he finally caved and got his own copy. While sometimes it may seem like there's nothing to do in Animal Crossing, there is everything to do at the same time. From fishing, to terraforming, to completing the museum, or even creating your own paths from scratch. There is never nothing to do. Now, Animal Crossing was released at a somewhat perfect time, just at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this definitely led a little bit to its success. It really became people's lives there for a while. Laura really wasn't exaggerating when she said we played it from sun up to sundown. We would go out, make a coffee, put on Animal Crossing and not turn it off until we went to bed at night. Now while we don't play this game religiously anymore, it would be so easy to do so until the end of time as they're constantly updating it. Now collectively we have over 600 hours in Animal Crossing, but I understand that them's rookie numbers. And that is just a testament to how great Animal Crossing really is. So if you're going to get one cozy game from this list, please make it Animal Crossing New Horizons. Sadly, we've reached the end of another video, but thank you so much for sticking around. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do these games make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, or are we completely wrong and some of them are ridiculously stressful? Now our list of cozy games got way too large to fit in this one video, so we might make another one. Let us know down below if we've missed any of your cozy favourites and we'll try and talk about them next time. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe you know a friend who works too hard or somebody with a little bit too much stress on their shoulders that you could share this video with. So thanks again if you're still here, we really appreciate you supporting the channel. And as always, I'm Laura, this is Tom, and you've been watching Some Kind of Gaming.